हेलो एवरीवन वॉम वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ अर्थ इक्विटी एग्रोफॉरेस्ट्री इनसाइट्स वे वी डेल्व इन टू द इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर फॉरेस्ट्री सोसाइटी एंड एनवायरमेंटल सस्टेनेबिलिटी टूडे वील एम्बार्क ऑन अ जर्नी थ्रू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल कॉन्वर्सेशन ऑफ अर एरा सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट Sustainable development isn't just a buzzword it is a powerful framework for ensuring that we meet the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs but what does this really mean how can we balance economic growth environmental protection and social equity and most importantly what role do we each play in this global movement now from green technologies and renewable energy to ethical consumerism and social initiatives today's episode will explore innovative ideas and practical steps that are making a real difference we will hear from expert in this field share inspiring success stories and offer actionable tips that can help us integrate sustainability into our daily lives so whether you're just passionate about environmental issues or just starting to learn about sustainable practices stay tuned as we unpack the principles of sustainable development and how they are reshaping our world now let's move over to our host of the day today we are your host gorika and aditya from delhi public school to dripper so let's dive in prefer knowledge to wealth for one is transitory the other perpetual it's a pleasure that we have been given this opportunity to enhance our knowledge joining us today is dr ashutosh dube joint director at agroforestry research center at gb pant university pantnagar uttarakhand who will help us understand the core concepts of sustainable development and why they matter welcome to the show sir thank you aditya it's pleasure to have you with us in this podcast we aim to deepen our understanding of sustainable development we'll also explore various issues that are reshaping the earth's ecosystem we are deeply interested in your work sir and would be honored to have you in our podcast today in particular we would love to hear about your personal journey what inspired you so much to pursue your career in agroforestry the challenges you have faced all along the way and what still drives your passion into this field okay thank you for the, and having me here and uh, it is very interesting question when i started my uh, journey after completing my phd i joined uh, forest research institute in dehradun there i worked for a couple of months and then uh, there i worked in the with the trees and their uh, biochemistry the molecular biology aspects of that i studied there and i worked in a project so that gave me an a very good insight wow, how what is the important aspects of trees and when so i joined this university gb pant university of uh, agriculture and technology i was uh, appointed in the department of biochemistry and then simultaneously i got an opportunity to work on different uh, small projects in agroforestry it was again related to forestry so that uh, piqued my interest and i start uh, working in that that f- uh, area with the small experimentations and uh, so uh, so and so forth and in 2014 i became fully involved in the agroforestry part basically i am working in um, two aspects um, in the back uh, in the agroforestry where we are using uh, looking for the new trees which can be used for the agroforestry purposes and uh, which crops can be grown under the trees apart with that what beneficial things uh, we can get from the trees which we are going on a farm so soil related informations secondary metabolites related information molecular biology of several unscored or unknown trees which are we know technically we know about them their botany their physiology but not their molecular biology so i am working on that aspects in my in my present uh, position so sir moving on can you share an example of a project or initiative you've been knowing that works to exemplify effective sustainable development what were the key factors that contributed to its success okay uh, the, the, the if, uh, in that context i must tell you uh, we are in uttarakhand and uttarakhand is a hill state where this um, pine needles they are in the hill area is a huge menace the there there are several uh, 
uses for them but it is none of them is found to be very feasible but uh, and they, that is causing huge uh, forest fires like uh, problems like that so in my department in back mr department we worked on the uh, those pine needles to make them uh, to get some useful product so that farmers or the local dwellers can collect those uh, leaves and can provide to some source and it can be used and converted in something which is which has commercial value so we worked on that and uh, by the process of pyrolysis that is uh, burning any substance in the absence of oxygen and getting it converted into uh, charcoal as well as some uh, bio oils and other uh, similar sort of products from the bio oil which we got from the pine needle we are able to my lab in my department they were able to form a bio grease which is used in these garages and all the machineries where the grease is being used which is in a, a green source grease and uh, because the chemical it can be synthesized but by, by this method we are preparing it has no environmental hazard so that is one initiative which I, which immediately come into mind there are several aspects where we are uh, using our trees we are planting them uh, by the river banks or the places where the soil erosion is too much so that by the pl plantation the soil erosion can be stopped or the industrial waste which is coming through the drains can be minimized so that the effect on the environment is minimum we had an a project in uh, this pilibir district where is even the industry uh, east making industry they have uh, planted bamboo plantation along with their uh, plant site uh, for to prevent the river to overcome or uh, take the do the soil erosion there for the loss of so that sort of uh, initiatives we are taking and we are working we still working on that aspects likewise that's really nice so moving on to the next thing sustainable development is a global issue but local actions are way too crucial how can communities and individuals contribute to sustainable development in their daily lives and what impact can these actions have a uh, sustainable development it is a very huge uh, you know area of work so each one of us can be helpful as a simple is that the one simple example is that by the minimizing the use of automobiles where it is not required we should walk or we should take cycle to go there so this is the some community participation can be done other than that we should also have this habit we should don't uh, waste water and another important thing that we try to plant trees not some ornamental shrubs or uh, something like that uh, we should get some uh, wherever we got opportunity in nearby parks or um, the roadside wherever if it is feasible we should plant a tree and care for it that is again important and the because if community is not participating for the safeguard of trees which government is planting everywhere but if communities are not supporting that those uh, growth of those trees uh, simply removing them so that they can park their vehicles there shouldn't be stopped and we all ha has to work together for that so sir as you said we should plant trees are there any specific trees you can name we should plant trees uh, it should be any tree if it is beneficial if it is some fruit bearing tree or something else or it is a fast growing tree that will be beneficial because nowadays you will see in our high rise societies there are no birds we will not see any monkeys in the high rise societies they are again they are menace i agree but they are required there in high rises what you will see only pigeons they are only the dirtying the building why and any other uh, not even crow is seen in the high rise buildings because they they have they don't have any shades or their place where they can you know uh, form their nests so the trees of any kind if it is planted it should be taken care so it will revive all the flora as well as fauna also fauna animal system so not only humans are being benefited but the animals which are getting extinct 
they are also being benefited. You you find that in certain areas there is menace of monkeys is too much. Wherever there is tree, the monkey will be there. In a, in Pannagar, there is a huge population of my monkeys is there because they are not getting any shade in uh, any other uh, urban area. For example, if trees are not there, honeybees will not be there because they are the pollinators. And if pollination is not happening, the we cannot survive because all our grains, all our crops, they are dependent on the pollination. If pollination is not there, we will not get the food materials. So, we have to conserve all the flora and fauna. There are so many types of birds which previously were there. A sparrow was the one of the common bird in my younger days. But we now, nowadays, we are hardly see them. Crows, the hardly seen there. So, make them, uh, you know, not scarce or endangered or rare. We have to... As a society, all of us have to work hard. Now, sir, moving on to the next question. Policy and regulations can greatly influence sustainable development. What are some policy changes or regulations you think are necessary to promote effective sustainable development? Policy is something uh, that has to be uh, considered all the national interests. Whatsoever is beneficial for one part of the state may not be useful for the other part of the state. But uh, I agree with you that there should be some clear-cut policy uh, matters should be there irrespective of whether which area we are talking about. If we are talking about the conservation of trees, if we are um, talking about the uh, regulation of the construction of a home or a any uh, commercial activity in at a particular place that should be adhered strong strictly so uh, in uttarakhand from where we are uh, at present we have to make sure that the plantation at hills they are shouldn't fallen prey to the poachers or those those who are uh, cutting trees just for their so, uh, their benefit they should be punished and uh, people should be, the local community should be involved uh, in them. You must have heard the Chipko Andolan of Garhwal. The local communities came uh, under the guidance of the Sri Sundarlal Bhagunaji and they preserved their trees. Now again, we have to have certain, those sort of uh, movements and support of the government so that the exploitation necessary uh, development is will require certain um, adjustments, but that uh, development should be you know balanced. It shouldn't be rampant or favoring favoring anyone when specific. Yes, sir. so moving on to the next question. Many times questions arise about how changing rainfall patterns have significant impact on agriculture and forestry. How are these changes in rainfall affecting agroforestry system? Are there any regions or crops that are particularly vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Very nice question. Uh, and uh, I will take an example with a tree that is uh, known as uh, commonly in our uh, region from where we are haldu you all must be uh, familiar with the haldwani haldu chor mota haldu haldi these areas are named after a tree haldu edina cardifolia which was prevalent in this region of uh, foothills uh, in the time when the, these uh, dwellings were developed but now you will know you will not find that tree anywhere why because this is a deciduous, a very large, very beautiful tree, but its seeds are very small, very minuscule. When, whenever in the monsoons, the seeds will be fall down. And uh, previously, when there was forest of Haldu, they will germinate there and propagate again. But as the urbanization happened, what happened? The trees were cut down. Whatsoever few less trees were left there, their uh, seeds will fall down on the uh, soil. And instead of getting germinated, they are very minuscule, very small. They were washed away with the water. 
rain water because there was no hindrance for water to freely flowing uh, taking them into the river gola river so nowadays uh, i have seen haldu in my university only two or three places and uh, i have to look after uh, look in the haldwani also i have seen only one or two places that haldu tree and uh, so this is the impact of uh, rampant urbanization uh, removal of trees that our diversity is being lost now what is happening again then the that is leading to the uh, you know uneven rainfalls previously uh, say about 10 to about 20 or 15 years ago the tarai region was famous for the all the artisans there you need not to put any motor or any pump you simply put a pipe and the water will come out but nowadays there is no artisan very few one or two artisan has been left another important aspect winter rains when we were in a 20 or 15 years ago winter rains in some uh, december was rampant in our region so the water table has been maintained but as the industrialization happened as the urbanization developmental projects of roads and railways and airport scheme the trees were you know cut it down for those there that is again important aspect but that has impacted how the winter rains have been stopped once in a while a shower will happen and nothing rain is nothing like that and that period of november and december is required for the you know this uh, for the rabi crops for the wheat sowing period then so we need a uh, no water uh, irrigation purposes now pe the people have to uh, irrigate that soil for the underground water has to be used now we are using our underground water, water table very drastically it is now approximately 17 or so feet below which was initially there is no need to put any pump the water will come out immediately so that is the impact of of deforestation and uh, imp on the rainfalls and overall our diversity in trees our uh, cultivation of crops everything is being affected and impacted so how is urbanization affecting global rainfall patterns for example, mm. I have the data here. I'll just read it out to you. The annual rainfall recorded in Rudrapur was 1,491 mm in 2020 and 1,231 mm in 2023, mm. showing a significant decrease of 260 mm. Mm. Can green spaces help counteract this change? Immediately, green spaces can do nothing. It will take time. Whatsoever we have lost, it cannot recover. It will take time. But definitely, if we are, if we start our uh, uh, preservation of our nature, our surroundings, within a ten or twenty years or fifteen years, it will be uh, come. We can compensate, not totally revive, but we can compensate. Uh, as far as uh, the global uh, waterfall, if you will talk about, previously we never heard about the rains in the Rajasthan and the Kutch region of Gujarat. Nowadays, you will see in the TV news and newspapers also, those areas are flooded. Last season, we had a very, very devastating uh, rains in Himachal Pradesh, where whole of the Mandi district was affected very severely. In our Uttarakhand, the uh, rains is affecting Kedar, Nath, Badrinath, Joshimad. Why? Because this, this term, cloud burst. Why is that happening? If there is a tree cover, the intensity of water will not be that fast. So the impact or the losses will be lesser. We did the uh, deforestation for our timber use or our requirement for the wood. So the forests are no longer there to bear that cloud burst. Dubai was flooded in few days ago. We never had dreamt of that that Dubai will be flooded. So that is the impact of changing uh, rain patterns where whenever they were initially was large amount of uh, rainfall now is being they are they are dried areas but those area which were previously considered dry or desert they are being flooded so that's how the climate change is impacting our rain pattern 
Okay, so next question for you is, sir, as we know, water logging is a frequent issue in the Rudhapur region of Udham Singh Nagar during rainy season, particularly near uh, forest areas and buildings. A similar issue is also observed in Tanda forest area. Though here the water doesn't tend to accumulate or remain at one place. So what are your views on this situation? The uh, forest area, in near forest area, the water logging is not a big problem. Why? Because in a one or two hour, or say one or two days, the water will be assimilated in the land, soil itself. But water logging in the urban area, nearby the colonies or the factories, where this the floor is not, uh, soil is not available, so the water logging is a huge problem. So there, for that purpose, we have to improve our civic am amenities, our civic duties. We shouldn't throw garbage in our uh, drainage system. We should keep them clean. Is important thing. And another important thing, the encroachments. N number of things are being you know, made ac uh, across the river sides so that the water is not reaching to the place where it can be thrown out. That has to be taken in care. So, sir, the general idea is that the people need to take action. People has to be sensitive. If Even if they are not taking any action, they should be sensitive. If they are sensitive enough, they will not do unwanted things. If those unwanted things are not there, nature will take care of itself. You must be remembering a couple of years ago during the COVID times, the air quality improved. And nobody did anything, but we didn't throw garbage or we didn't contribute it in that. The ozone layer get improved. Mountain ranges were clearly seen from far away places. So, if we are not, we cannot actively participate in uh, our environmental issues, at least we should be sensitive enough we are not harming it. Now, sir. Let's pivot to a concept that's gaining attention. The idea of green deserts versus green spaces. We understand the difference between these two terms. But why is it crucial for us to grasp the distinction between them? Yep, very important. Green deserts, as you must be knowing, its name suggests it is desert which is green. What is desert? There is no diversity. There is nothing to you know look for there. Similarly, green deserts, what we are having, these manicured gardens, beautiful lawns, where grass is there and few ornamental plants, not trees also. So they are not contributing in any way for the betterment of our environment. They are simply aesthetics. They are not uh, supporting any sort of uh, required uh, aspects. They are simple, beautiful places and they, they, neither there is any diversity nor any support to the environment, ki oxygen or carbon dioxide, nothing like that. That is green desert. Green spaces like your parks, where we have multitude of trees, shrubs, grass, everything is there, but we shouldn't destroy them. We should pamper them or uh, support them to be remain green spaces parks are very good places uh, but we have to uh, think that not only we are keeping uh, some ornamental flowers or flower plants or trees we should have some uh, large trees like neem or mango or berries likewise so that they can also support the uh, animals like birds so green deserts are of no use green uh, places they can be uh, they should be there in more in our cities and they should be maintained and supported by the civilians whosoever are using them for their morning walks or their uh, yoga classes or simple just to chit chat there in the some winters but we should uh, look after those places 
Very true, sir. So my, now my next question for you is: There is a noticeable increase in temperature due to global warming, which is largely attributed to the excess production of chlorofluorocarbons (CFCs) and carbon dioxide. According to the National Science Agency, these compounds are really harmful to our ozone layer. So, can you suggest some plants that can help mitigate the effects of these harmful compounds? There are two things, as you mentioned, Garika: chlorofluorocarbons. and carbon dioxide these two are very different they are uh, because carbon dioxide can be utilized by the plants for the purpose of photosynthesis to fix that carbon dioxide in the form of carbohydrates but chlorofluorocarbons are a very different thing uh, carbon dioxide if it is in a large quantity it is it creates some health hazards for humans also but it can be mitigated with the help of trees but on the other hand chlorofluorocarbons they are almost harmless for us they are used in several uh, refrigeration packing materials uh, fire extinguishers etc but they are not harmful for us as such but they are harmful for our uh, environment why because they cannot be mitigated with the help of trees simple we have to cut short we have to cut down the production of chlorofluorocarbons we have to make sure that it is not being produced and whatsoever is being produced we have to limit it so there are uh, chlorofluorocarbon 11 chlorofluorocarbon 12 there are two forms are there so they are not used in the photosynthesis they simply get photo uh, photolyzed photolyzed meaning they are degraded in the presence of light Not only that can happen, and uh, as you know, there our atmosphere have strata, अलग अलग different strata are there, stratosphere and uh, troposphere, you know. So in the stratosphere, which in which we are uh, breathing, they are not the chlorofluorocarbons are not degraded, but uh, but above that is uh, stratosphere uh, tropospheres in the presence of solar light. they are splitted and during that split split they produces chlorine and that chlorine is uh, is harmful for our ozone layer and that creates this ozone layer disruption holes uh, creating in the ozone layer is happening because of that chlorine which is released from the chlorofluorocarbon and no tree can do that no tree can mitigate that only carbon dioxide and other all these gases can be up to a mark the carbon dioxide can be used very easily by the plant trees chlorofluorocarbon we have to minimize our dependence on the air conditioners certain uh, packaging materials then only we can improve our environment so could you suggest us some more ways to promote sustainable development in a more effective manner education is the only way by which we should learn that in the absence of chemicals or excessive use of chemicals we can survive we have to make sure that we are using uh, gadgets or uh, machinery which are creating less environmental hazards uh, i must say that organic uh, agriculture it sounds very good very perfect we are moving towards the natural agriculture also but a small quantity of chemicals will always be there in the agriculture but excessive use if it is required only 100 grams and if we are using there one kg 10 folds more then it is never going to help us in any way so totally devoid our environment our lifestyle with chemicals or these technologies or all those things is bit tricky so i must i will say that for the sustainable development we have to be more natural in our day to day life instead of totally shutting it out routine totally being uh, out of the you uh, ban the or stop the use of chemicals or anything like that is not possible that we cannot attain our growth which we are you know very populous country we need to feed all the people in 140 crore people we have to feed so we cannot live in an environment where everything is natural 
but judicious use of chemicals and uh, taking care of our environment individually by every one of us is the need of our then only we can get a sustainable uh, developmental model which will benefit us as well as uh, maintain our growth and uh, make our environment uh, good okay so moving on education and awareness are key components of fostering sustainable development as you said how do approach educating others about sustainability like how can we tell others to be sustainable enough so that how what strategies have you found most effective in your own life uh, the most uh, effective way is to teach a young kid about the environment but as we grow as we try to tell some grown up person that this is bad or this shouldn't be done it is very difficult for him to or her to fall but if we inculcate that thing in our younger generation people of your age uh, if we put them that it is uh, our national duty it is our moral duty then this will be far better instead of you know making everything rules and regulation will not solve the purpose we have to be self aware and uh, we have to show people that if this uh, trend is continued how bad it will affect us how bad it will for our overall uh, life style then people are easier for that to understand if they loses their livelihood or they loses their health if then if we show them if we project them that this equal to this and this equal to this and this will lead to this then this will be easier for them to understand but the best bet on my part is to teach them as young as we could it should be part of curricula we should make our students to vigilant that their families their neighbors are not doing something which is harmful for the nature we have to make the people our uh, guardians so so as you said i think they need to be active campaigns for the students and as for the part of adults we need to show them the examples so now sir moving on as we approach the end of this fascinating podcast i want to make sure we capture the essence of our conversation to wrap things up could you please provide a summary of the key points we've discussed in this podcast today so that our listeners may get a better understanding okay uh today we discussed that what is um, environment how we can make it uh, what are the uh, ailments which it is feeling getting or how it can be improved these three things i think broadly covered everything and uh, nowadays your school curricula is are having ews uh, environmental science studies all of you must be having you uh, know that is important uh, initiative and along with this i must say the moral science should be taught to you all people also because when we read about the or learn that certain um, behavior is not acceptable so, uh, socially towards environment or towards each other then we will be more sensitive and since if we will uh, uh, try our level best we, if we start now day now immediately then within 10 years or 15 years we will reap the benefits of the uh, improvement in our environment now you must be listening in the winter season this um, delhi people having uh problems of uh, breathing problem because of the burning of certain uh, crop residues if we educate people that that same crop residue can be used for the other purposes which can give us more benefit rather than simply burning it out then they will be more inclined to do that simply punishing people for some folly which they are doing will not serve the purpose we have to make them aware and show the benefits of the right path so as you said about the burning of the residue 
I think there were some government schemes that were working on it, but they weren't widely spread. As I myself visited my village, talked to my grandfather, he told me there was some government officials who came and told the farmers about it, but the efforts were not widely spread. That is main problem. Scientists are working in this those areas, but the extension of those techniques, technologies is not so widespread because government also have some limitations. Government uh, officials have several other, they have to look after this also until uh, so that it has to be make prioritize in our, uh, you know, local governing bodies level. Instead of government official doing this, the local governing bodies, panchayats, pradhans, they must be involved in this. They should be, you know, given some trainings so that they they themselves can be the torch bearer for the information for the area from where they are coming. Because for government, it is responsibility of government so that it is providing several uh, initiative technologies, several uh, instruments also. But local involvement should be more. As in, in my opinion, then only these techniques or these requirements can be fulfilled. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. As we wrap up, our entire team of Eco Igniters would like to thank you for the opportunity to learn from your experience and knowledge. It has truly been a delight to be a part of such an insightful podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Gorika. Thank you, Aditya. I hope the audience enjoyed the podcast. As much as we did, we put in our best efforts to make it both knowledgeable and enlightening. So until next time, this is Team Eco Igniters signing off. <laughs>